I, Wendy Lee Graham, I, Wendy Lee Graham, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. The duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Wendy Graham for her splendid work here at OMB, especially in the regulatory area. And some people have marked the pace of change in the last seven years by listing things like moving the top tax rate from 70 to 28 percent or reaching agreement on eventually balancing the budget or the Soviets talking about getting out of Afghanistan. But for me, the steady but enormous change we've made in the deregulatory field over these past seven years has been particularly significant and one that historians, I think, will carefully note. Wendy has played a critical role in this, both at FTC and then at OMB. And I want you to know, Wendy, we're all grateful for the real difference that you've made. And I'm grateful, too, that you're taking on your new assignment, one that promises to be challenging to your philosophy and needs your competence. The second reason I wanted to be here today was I feel a special kinship to the Grams. Now, I'm not just referring to the fact that I also made the journey from one political philosophy and party to another, as did Bill Graham. And no, I'm not just referring to the fact that vote, Phil's voting record in the Senate fits with my way of thinking right down the line. But Phil, I think you should know that, like you, I met my future wife as part of my official duties. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't it ironic? Here we all are, believers in getting government out of people's lives, making government our lives in order to do that. But seriously, Bill and Wendy, the devotion both of you have shown to the cause of returning America <clears throat> to greatness is an inspiration to myself and to all of your friends who are here today. It's something for both of you to be proud of, just as today all of us are proud of you both. privilege to have worked in your administration and carrying forth your agenda these past six years. I've especially enjoyed being here at OMB trying to reduce paperwork and regulations. I know that's been important to you. It's not always an easy job, but it's been a tremendous lot of fun. And I will miss, as I move across the way a little bit, I'll miss working with your staff here along with the folks at OMB. They're really great and they've been a lot of support. Let me also say that when I go to the CFDC, I realize it's a very important responsibility, and I appreciate the trust you've placed in me. And I will continue to push forward our agenda, and that is just making sure that markets work and that they work well. Thanks a lot.
Nice well, of you to meet me. Well, nice to see you and to have well, you in. Thank you very much indeed. I just so appreciate it. And I can only say that it's not just me, but my organization is in the back home. Appreciate <laughs> oh, your kindness. Come in. This is Senator Baker. How are Hello, how nice yeah. to meet you. I really pleasure. appreciate the opportunity to meet you. Nice to meet with you. Well, why don't you come in and thank you. chair there? So this is the famous Oval Office? This is the Oval Office. Why, that's just it's an amazing one of us, I can't tell you. Well, I, I understand it sort of was patterned, in a sense, the Oval nature of it. Yes. Uh, after what is a large living room of this shape up in the White House where yes. the residence. Yes. yes. And the whole thing came about because of one of our presidents, Theodore Roosevelt. Right. In those days, this whole wing did not exist. The, was not, that was not only a residence, but all the executive officers and everything were there. I see. Until one day, Mrs. Roosevelt yes. said to the president, if I'm going to raise six children in the house, you're going to get your people out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Margaret. And so the West Wing was created. How terrific. Well, it does seem so amazing that it comes to you here today, because it's almost exactly... I understand the House leadership has put the final touches on their aid package for the Nicaraguan Democratic Resistance. I smelled it first thing this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm concerned that time's running out in our efforts to continue to support the peace process by providing aid to the Nicaraguan Democratic Resistance. And Robert, I'd like to have your thoughts on what you think will happen next in the House. Well, I went to see uh, Jim last night with Tom Foley, and uh, uh, while I thought I'd get the specifics of the plan last night, it was just in broad general. I should general debate tomorrow, one hour on the substitute, if we want to, if we want to uh, uh, have one. What uh, apparently in broad general lifelines, what they've got in mind is uh, 16 million for four months until June 30th. That's supposedly the current rate of appropriation, and then they would have a definition only food, clothing, shelter, medical services, medical supplies, and payment and transportation for such items. 
with respect. <laughs> Our White House equipment is not the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> but we get tapes from the New York Times. <laughs> but it has received the New York Times. Let him go. 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 Let him go.
But let me stop right now and ask for your thoughts on how we can keep Congress focused on the deficit and the budget process. <coughs> In meeting with the governors the other day when they were here, I said something to them which 50 heads nodded in agreement. There isn't a state in the union that would put up with the Mickey Mouse budget process that we have here at the federal level where it's so, so very vital. Well, the floor is open. Mr. President, I, uh, I regarded that in my judgment was in relation to uh, the budget deficit problem and the fact that the rest of the world is looking for us to take these matters seriously. I don't know about Congress, but I know that your staff, and I'm not prone to giving a lot of praise away, but uh, <coughs> Senator Baker, Dan Crippen, and some other people, uh, at that time, did an extraordinary job of keeping it.